Hi folks, Gerald here again. I uh, just thought I'd put together a, uh, a new tutorial video on how I use and integrate uh, Nick's Color Effects Pro um, filter called Detail Extractor uh, into my workflow in order to be able to tease and extract um, a little bit more contrast and depth detail within the uh, confines of uh, my images and my approach in terms of being able to use it in such a way that I give myself ultimate flexibility to target the key kind of main areas within um, uh, the, the makeup of any particular image. So in this particular image it's going to be this foreground area, it's going to be this midground area to the horizon and then it's just going to be the sky. Um, so Here's this image. I've been working with it uh, for a little while. Um, I've been making a, a bunch of contrast and uh, color enhancements to it uh, just to give it a little bit of lift, uh, just to bring it to life a little bit more and I'll just toggle this group on and off. That's kind of where I was starting uh, at and kind of this is kind of where I've got to just make it a little bit more warmer, I say made it a little bit more contrasty and give it a little bit more visual depth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use, um, go into a launch uh, Next Color Effects Pro uh, and apply the Detail Extractor filter. So I'm just going to click on it to launch Color Effects and it's going to open up eventually. And here is the image. Um, it's actually defaulted to the Detail Extractor because that was the last filter that I've used. Now you can find all the filters under the filter list up here and it's actually listed in alphabetical order. And right down here is a Detail Extractor. And uh, I've actually made this a favorite. Um, that's why it's got this little yellow star next to it. And you do that by once you apply any of the filters, um, when you move to the left, the uh, star will become live. You can click on it and um, it then makes it a favorite and what that will do is it will add it to your um, your your filter list favorites here actually on the main um, interface um, for the if uh, for the uh, Google effects Pro. so anyway here we are now I just want to make a quick caveat uh, by saying that anything that happens from here on in this video is purely to one's own individual taste now the default um, state that um, detail extractor opens up in for for me personally it's starting to get way too close to that kind of like slightly o that harder more overly processed HDR look um, there's a little compare button up there so if we just click to compare that's what we have in Photoshop and this is what it would look like if this was applied in this kind of in full strength as it is here now there are some um, control sliders up here I don't really bother with those I will accept this at this juncture and we'll take it back into um, Photoshop in order to kind of allow me to show you how I will now then work with this um, to maximize its effect in terms of how I, I want it to appear in the image. So I'm just going to slip OK and it's just going to save that. So what Nick does is that it creates this new uh, detail extracted uh, version on its own individual layer that you can toggle it on and off. So that's that's with it's on, that's with it off, and that's with it's on. Now what I want to do is to say I want to isolate the three key areas of this particular image. Now I'm going to do that by creating uh, a series of masks. Now you know I've got to assume that you have have an understanding of what masks are and how you go to use them. Now the good news about this particular um, situation is that they don't have to be pixel exact. They can be fairly, um, I want to say overly loosey goosey, but as I say, you know, you can have a little bit of latitude in terms of how accurate they are. So with that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up under my quick selection tool and I'm just going to now try to isolate this foreground. I'm just going to start clicking in here and I'm just going to start dragging out and hopefully it's going to behave itself and make a fairly accurate selection of that. There's, it, it should do because there's quite a lot of good contrast between the edge of that snow and the midground. And yes, there we are. And so now we have a live selection here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my channels panel and I'm now going to come down to the this icon here at the bottom. It's the rectangle with a little hole in it that says save selection as channel and that's what I'm going to do. Now what this has done is, as I say, this is now save the selection. I'm going to uh, press Control or Command D to deselect that and I'm just going to now name this as foreground. Okay, 
I'm going to come back to the RGB. Now what I want to do is I want to try and isolate this mid-ground area here. So I'm just going to start dragging away. Hopefully, come on, you can do it. See how far up this can go. I don't want to go too far into that sky. I'll probably push it to about... Uh, okay, that, that'll, that'll do fine. Perfect. So far, so good. Righty-ho, that's that. And I'm going to do the same thing in the Channels panel. I'm going to come down and save that. And I'm going to press Command-D to deselect it. And I'm going to call this uh, Foreground. Uh, sorry, no, what am I talking about? I've already done that. Midground. I beg your pardon. Okay, midground. So all that's left to do now is to um, do the same thing, but to isolate just the sky. And there is some method in my madness, I do promise you. Come on, there you go. There you go. Perfect. Right, okay. Now, it's going to come down here, and I'm now going to save that as a channel, and deselect it, and obviously I'm going to name that Sky. Right. Now, what I'm going to do is, we. this is our detail extractor. I'm now going to duplicate this layer three times by going, uh, but just by hitting Command J, uh, that'll be Control J on a uh, PC, I believe. So I now have three copies of this detail extractor. There's, I'm now going to isolate each part of the image by using uh, layer masks, and this is how I'm going to go about doing it. This first um, layer here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to isolate the foreground. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my foreground channel. I'm going to command, uh, command click on it. That would be control click on it on a PC, I believe. To make a selection, now the marching ants, you can see there's a selection here. I'm going to just come up to the RGB. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to attach a mask to this particular layer. Now, you're not really going to see anything right now because, as I say, these two above it are visible. So what I'm going to do on this next layer is I'm now going to come down to my mid-ground channel. And I am going to control or command click on that to make a selection. I'm going to come back to the actual layer and I'm going to add a mask to that. So that's now given me the detail extractor for the mid-ground uh, element. Similarly what I'm now going to do come to the top one and I'm now going to command or control click on the sky channel to make a selection. Come back to this top panel and again add a Now what I've now got, you see, if I start turning these off, you can see that this one is now just targeting the foreground. And what I can do is I can now use the opacity slider to dial this back as much or as little as possible without affecting any other parts of the elements of the image itself. Now, you know, given this is snow, it's kind of pretty soft anyway, so you know, I may want to go a little bit you know, not not too harsh on that, so it starts to get a little bit phony. Now let me turn back on my mid-ground. Now this is this at full strength, and you can see how this has kind of come to life. So again, you know, this is what's going to happen. It's all going to be a balancing act in terms of like how much of these areas you want to have affected by this detail extractor. So let me just go and switch the um, sky layer on. And obviously this is way too harsh because those clouds are getting really kind of crunchy. But it may be that we do just want to bring in a little bit of detail. So I'm actually going to dial that back all the way back to zero in terms of the opacity and just start bringing it up a little bit. Maybe to around about 30%. So this sky area um, has an opacity of 30%. I'm kind of got nearly 70% here on the mid-ground area. And the foreground uh, layer, I've got around about 44%. Uh, in terms of its opacity. I kind of like nice round numbers, so I'm going to dial that back to 40. So, what you can see by doing it this way, you can give yourself um, ultimate control about how much presence or how much of this detail extractor you do want to bring into the image in terms of the key areas. Now, obviously, don't forget, these are layer masks. So, what you could now do, let's say, for example, down in the foreground, the stuff was still too kind of crunchy down here, but kind of liked it over here, then what it would then do is obviously just come with a brush and, I don't know, 
I'll tap the make sure the foreground set to black. I'm going to just increase the size of it and target this mask and just paint into that to kind of hide any areas within that foreground detail extraction that I don't want showing through. So as I say you can see that's hiding that bit down there. So I'll just kind of undo that. The other thing you might want to do in terms of um, Analyst, if I just option click on this uh, mask here just to show you, I mean, obviously this is kind of a pretty harsh line uh, around the edge of, of this particular mask. So if you come to, I'm just going to bring on the, the properties, uh, I'm just going to stick it in there. Why not? This is the properties and you can find the properties on the window, come down here to properties, that'll, that'll bring that up. I've just got these on the screen next to me. We come to the properties of this layer of the mask what we can actually do is just to introduce some feathering just to soften that edge just so there may not be any kind of hard clash between this and the uh, the other layer above it and we could do this I'll probably do the same for edge I just want to um, feather out this particular layer mask just by softening those edges just a bit that's kind of good enough I'm just doing this very quickly, obviously, because I don't want to keep you here all night. And I'll do the same thing with this guy. I'm just going to option click on, on that, just option click so I can see that and come over to its mask properties and just very gently feather that so it softens it down. Just as I say, just to make sure there's kind of, you know, there's not kind of like any kind of hard edging uh, between th these three layers and their respective masks. So once you have this at this stage, as I say, you now have complete freedom to begin to, um, as I say, adjust the presence of this de detail extractor, uh, it, detail extractor with uh, the key kind of main areas of any particular image. Now obviously, you know, this, this is kind of quite lucky because there are sort of like pretty well defined areas and, you know, it may not be that you might have that on each image, but it it kind of could just show you that you know by isolating certain areas of an image and then you know bringing in the detail extracts and masking it out or duplicating it to create different areas you you can kind of as i say you know adjust its presence with a lot um you know with a lot of control in terms of its overall presence so what i'm actually going to do now is i'm actually going to shift click and um select all of these uh, images and I'm going to put them in a group by going command G that puts it in a little folder and I'm just going to name this folder detail and I'm just going to turn it on and off so you can see that was the before and that was the after and as I say with all these now housed in it you can just go back in at any time you want to make uh, any kind of further adjustments in terms of either you know maybe decide you know you do want to bring up a little bit more detail into that that foreground or you just want to kind of start knocking it back. Um, I think definitely uh, what I will always do is I will now progress further with any other changes. I will all I will never kind of flatten it out to lose it because I will always want to be able to go back to this because I guarantee is as I start working further into this um, uh, with any kind of more contrast change, color bouncing change, I might find that some of the, the, the this actually might be starting to just get too contrasty, too crunchy. So to be able to back out and then maybe just reduce down its opacity even further just to bring it into better balance, it's definitely a good idea to be able to, as I say, group these, house these, and then have them as you know, up your sleeve to go back to if you find further down the road that you're, um, some of this is kind of getting just a little bit too contrasty and a bit crunchy. Um, so there's the before, as I said, sorry, there's the before, and again, there's the after. And now that this is in a group, you can actually um, reduce the entire the the, impas the opacity of the entire group by pulling on pulling up and down on the slider here. So you know that's it at full strength. But now I'm globally bringing down the presence of that of all those layers in that group. So there you have it. Hope this has been of some use. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you on the next go round.